Joshua Finn from J&H Aerospace and this is the build video for the TSA floater. This is an airplane based off of the design I published a number of years ago for the TSA middle school flight endurance rules and it has remained very competitive up until now. Now we are pro producing a kit for an airplane that's a little bit of an improvement over that and here it is and this kit builds two complete airplanes plus it has parts to do uh, parts blanks to build two more so you have one to practice with and one to build on site. So let's get started with the build and we'll show you how to put this airplane together and how to fly it. So for, um, for, for your contest flying with, uh, with flight endurance since the, the new rules for uh, 2020 and 2021 dictate that you need to show up with an airplane that's already built um, you have to have it trimmed. There's no trim opportunities on site, so you have to actually build out an airplane in advance. Um, you're not. Get, uh, you, you need to have it trimmed and ready to go, or you don't even make it into those qualifying uh, in, into the uh, the finals. So that means you have to build this airplane out. You have to build it out well, and then you have to have to be able to deliver on site. So lots of practice flying is required. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the parts from your kit uh, for, for your pre-build model. These are your laser cut already to go parts. Um, and so what we're going to do is, is we're going to shape these out. So uh, first thing to do is this wing, um, as it is, you can't get good flight times with this. You need to have uh, some, some tapering, some airfoiling in this wing. Uh, I recommend uh, to do that to have a razor plane. Uh, instead of just do it using sandpaper, this is much faster and is more accurate. Now, this is a custom razor plane. Most of you guys are not going to be able to get a nice one like this, so you'll want a uh, Stanley Mini Plane, uh, which is still a very good quality product. Uh, those of you that um, that need something a little, uh, you know, can spend a little more money and still need something quick, get a, a David Plane. Um, if you're really serious into uh, aero modeling, though, this is the Bruce Kimball plane. This is a, a custom build, um, and, and we have information. If, if you contact me through our website um, or, or via email, I can give you the information for how to get on the list to get one of these. Um, this is, there, there's a waiting period. They're $45 plus shipping. Um, and, and and so not just anyone uh, needs to go after these because Bruce has a you know full time job. So if you're getting this, make sure you're 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 serious about your flying. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to kind of bevel from about a third of the way back uh, from our leading edge at the root. We're going to bevel that back, and we want to taper the wing down to it's a little bit less than one thirty second inch thick at the back. And so what we're doing is we're we're not riding this across level, we're actually tilting it. Um, and not, not a whole lot, we're just tilting it a little bit. If you ride kind of askew like this, instead of riding straight, ride kind of like that, um, you get a little bit better cuts. Except when you mess up like I did there. Um, now you don't want to overdo this either. Because you can cut too thin, um, and then you'll actually split the uh, the wing apart a little bit back there. I'm gonna make one more pass. Hopefully, I'll get away with it. I'm gonna try to um, reduce my bite a little bit on this guy. There we go. So I've got this wing trailing edge. I've got it quite quite thin at this point. I'm starting to cut through. So what we'll do is just pop that out. You see I left a, a little bit of a hole right here. Um, that's what you want to try to avoid doing. Um, I got just too aggressive there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to squirt a little bit of CA in. We'll come back and we'll just sand this down. I 
actually cut through here too, so um, avoid doing what I have done, basically. So I'm going to patch this up. beauty of balsa wood is that you can if you so we've got this uh, ubu that I made uh, mostly fixed here um, and I'm going to go ahead and sand that down so I can determine uh, ordinarily I would go ahead and sand the leading edge um, before or sorry plane the leading edge before sanding this but since I messed up a little bit and then here Make sure that this is gonna, gonna be viable. It looks like it's about right. If you have not built a glider before, I don't recommend really sanding even this thin in the first place. Uh, but I choose to do it uh, here because I want to show you how far you can go with one of these. And there we go. Now the next thing is come around here and we're just going to do a wedge around here. We're not going to do a curved airflow. Um, at, at the low speeds these airplanes fly, it's much better to just have a wedge shape. Um, so if you've studied airfoils and whatnot, um, look at, at, at the, at the uh, speeds these airplanes are flying, all of that completely goes out the window. So as you can see, I don't know if it shows up real well, but this is just a, a, a straight double to a sharp leading edge. And there we go. So if you look at, um, I don't know if it shows up real well in the light, you can kind of see where it's just a, a straight bevel all the way around here. There's no curvature. And so now at this point we're going to go ahead and add dihedral to this wing. This is our wing pylon. We'll come back to it in a minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run this razor blade along the uh, score marks here. That's going to allow me go ahead and kind of crack this up. It's okay if the wing cracks completely through. You want to try to avoid that if possible, though. Because what we're going to want to do 
have our dihedral gauge handy. It's got the little notch here. The, in your kit, this will probably be made from acrylic. Um, and that way it kind of skirts uh, or avoids the uh, rule saying your, um, that your templates cannot be made from um, balsa or basswood. Try to use uh, tonight. I have a lot of excess glue here because the glue adds weight. I'm trying to build this airplane as light as possible. There we go. So that's our dihedral on one side. We'll put it in the other side now. patch under here where the glue kind of soaked through. That's okay. Just want to sand it out though. And now we'll do the center. Here in the center section, you can see I broke mine free. I'm going to go ahead and cut it loose all the way. Because of what we're going to do eventually anyway. It's only this front section about this far that you're even concerned about. And so the rest of it, I'll take this pylon here, and I'm actually going to cut back a little bit like so. So I'm taking a little bit of material off of it. I'm also going to round off the front for a little bit better aerodynamics. And then what we'll do is after that I want to split my wings so what I'm doing is coming in here now if you're flying in like a higher ceiling you don't need this split in the wing so if you're launching like uh, 40 or 50 feet this isn't as necessary a little bit. You may even want to break it free out here. Not as much. I don't like that. That gives you just a little more flap area here. cutting in about you know half an inch or so. Try to avoid what happened right there which is where I split the wing apart because if that happens you are in a little bit of a pickle. Um, that can be difficult to repair well and it will introduce flutter um, which basically renders your airplane almost unflyable. But anyway, we can now mount this pylon on here like so. I'm going to 
try to center it up on the dihedral joint. Like so. Just like that. Your fuselage should have a little mark about three and a quarter inches back uh, from the uh, wing leading edge, or from the, from the, sorry, from the nose, and that's where your the front of your pylon is going to go. But before we do this, we want to shave a little bit of weight off of this fuselage because um, it's just completely unnecessary. It's okay to have all this weight up front, where it's nice and thick. But in the back, we want to take some of that away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce a taper by planing it various points like that and then what we'll do is we know that our pylon stops about right here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of cut in like this I'm actually going to start cleaning right there and so I'm going to taper down the top of the fuselage here like that so you can see this got much thinner very very quickly and so I've taken a whole bunch of weight off of this and now if I balance it on my finger you can see the center of gravity is way ahead of the you know the middle of this guy so now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and mount uh, this wing on here with the front at that, uh, that little mark and you want to be very careful that your flaps clear on either side of the fuselage um, and if necessary, you know, trim in there a little bit because these don't, you don't want those to contact the fuselage at all. We're going to put our hook in here. We need to clean out some of the excess here. with the front, sand off a little here, and there we go. At the back, you, don't, you want to leave a little bit left sticking out, and actually we're going to go ahead and we're going to sand these tail surfaces, because we want to shed a little bit of weight off of them, mainly on their trailing edges, we're going to try and taper that down to an airfoil, and Generally, don't try using your razor plane on this because you'll probably just cut right through. And you can sand these almost paper thin at the edges. Just make sure you don't warp them or anything. same thing with our vertical tail. The reason we want to take all of this weight off that we possibly can back here is twofold. One, it reduces the amount of nose weight we have, but it also reduces the amount of weight we have at the extremities so that the airplane will go up and snap into its glide uh, very easily at the top. It's very important that you reduce all the weight at the extremities that you possibly can. And there we go. So 
So what we'll do is we'll attach our stab here. Again, leave enough sticking out back here that you can get a grip on it. You've got a center line mark on here. You know, kind of how to get it centered up. Try to not use as much glue as I did because I used too much. And that thing about weight at the extremities applies. Now you can mount this uh, rudder on the top, or vertical stab, I should say. You can mount it on the top, or you can mount it over on the side. I recommend mounting it on the right side and just overlap. Just that tiny bit so you don't drop it all the way down, leave it up a little bit. And you can stick it in here and remember to leave enough room to get your finger back here. You do not want, under any circumstances, when you're pulling back, your fingers must not come in contact with that rudder because you're going to bend this one way or another to uh, tune your glide uh, and, and your transition and so on. And so if your fingers touch that, the airplane gets thrown out of trim immediately. Next, we're going to balance the airplane. And uh, for an airplane like this, we want the center of gravity ahead of um, that flap notch, you know, basically ahead of halfway on this, on this wing, um, because this is a, a very short-tailed airplane and so it needs a forward center of gravity. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a dab of glue around the front here. And be aware um, that you stay within the maximum length uh, that the rules specify for the finished glider. I want to start balancing this guy. And the CG currently is right about here, which is a good starting place. So there's your finished glider. And from here we're going to go to flight trimming for it. Um, so that'll be a, a separate video, separate topic. Um, we at uh, JNH Aerospace, we have a variety of videos on trimming gliders. This one is a little more challenging to trim in certain ways. Uh, in that it's, it's very short coupled, uh, so it doesn't have the nice pitch damping and whatnot. Uh, but as, as I said, we have instructional videos on how to trim these airplanes and get them going. Um, I'll go ahead and show you some brief uh, remarks on it though. So what we want to start out with is we just want to check that this glider glides straight ahead without stalling. And it does not. So we'll be right back. If you look at this uh, airplane, you can see if you measure from here back to right here, there's a very sharp angle relative to our horizontal stab. So what we're going to do is we're going to go on the left, uh, sorry, on the right side of the tail. We're going to bend it down like this. Give us some nose down trim, kind of like that, rather than just outright adding nose weight. We'll go ahead and give it some right rudder. And I'm also going to twist this wing, this is the left wing, and twist it up a little bit <clears throat> so that the airplane has some left roll trim and some right uh, yaw trim. Um, let me try that again. Launch that into an obstacle. Still stalling a little. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a razor blade right here next to the tail, just so I can bend all of that down, just like that. Hard landing. Alright, so the airplane was starting to dive out a little bit, so we'll reduce that a little, and then we're going to add some more right rudder trim. 
So if you see our rudder is now like that, that's not unusual to see that much deflection or more. And uh, since the airplane was starting to go kind of straight uh, in, I'm going to add a little bit of nose weight because I'm going to have to take some, uh, some of that down elevator out. Let's see how that goes. Okay, looking a little better. Okay, so at this point you have a uh, glider for your uh, preliminary round uh, ready to go. Um, obviously you need to continue trimming this, just those test glides is not enough. You've got to put it on catapult and launch it up there. Um, and we've got some details on how to, how, how to do all of that uh, that, are, that are related to it because we're going to show you a trimming video uh, for, for this airplane. Um, so that gives you your preliminary round. So you're going to need to proceed to your next segment to look into uh, the aspect of how to scratch create this airplane. Because we're going to show that process as well using the templates and whatnot that you'll need. Uh, if you progress beyond the uh, preliminary round, you've got to be prepared to build the airplane out uh, on site as well. And so you need to practice that. And we supply enough materials for you to build one practice model. Um, and then have additional materials to go on site and then build your model on site. So, um, questions, comments uh, for this segment, put them in the comment section below or contact me directly, and we'll see you later. Hi, I'm Josh Finn. This is Hope. We are J&H Aerospace. If you like this video, hit the like button. Also, how about subscribe to our channel and check out jhaerospace.com for new free flight products and all of the tooling that you'll need to build them. Thanks for watching.